This is our Come Together, Create Together art party, um, art class, whatever you'd like to call it. And uh, this week we are talking about the fragmented mind. So in my yoga classes, um, as well as my weekly newsletter, that's been my theme for the week. So we tend to get really uh, scattered this time of year. You know, we have a million things going on, presents to buy. We've got obviously high anxiety levels, high, high stress in that regard. And uh, we tend to get in this mind space of like a million things and we can't even focus on one. So this whole theme is about coming back to center, pulling in the pieces. I've been calling it defragmentation, which is a computer term for anyone that's in tech out there, where you're, you're pulling things back together and you're allowing things to run more smoothly. So the same idea with us is that we are defragmenting our minds. Let's take a few moments to just ground and stretch and breathe and do a short meditation before we get into our art class. So taking a step back, just take a moment and roll your shoulders up, down, and back. Ground down through your feet. Maybe your eyes come to a close. Fingertips pointed towards the ground. And just take a few rounds of cleansing breath, inhaling through the nose. Let's stretch our arms up as we go. Exhale, release the arms down, hands to heart center. Release the fingertips, inhale, arms lift, gaze lifts, heart lifts. Exhale, hands come down and to heart center. This time we're going to add some forward folds. Inhale, arms lift overhead. Exhale, forward fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift, lengthen your spine, fingertips to shins. Root your femurs back. Exhale, fold, sit bones to the sky. Grounding down, inhale, rise up, arms overhead. Exhale, hands to heart center. Let's do a little twisting, release the fingertips. Bring your feet wider than hip width distance. And we'll just begin to twist um, right and left. So, you know, take a twist to the right, take a twist to the left. Let your opposite heel come off the ground and we're just loosening up the spine. And just let the arms fly. Especially if you've been sitting today, it's a great way to get out of your seat. And just kind of let things relax. And then come back to center, roll your shoulders up, down, and back. And let's just take another little stretch, grab for opposite elbows overhead, bend in your knees this time. Begin to draw your tailbone down, draw your shoulders back, hands around your elbows. And then think about knitting your low ribs in, abdominal engages, abs engage. And release, roll your shoulders. Take it to the other side. Same thing, bend in the knees, draw the abdomen in, knit the low ribs in, shoulders go back. And really have this nice pressure between your hands and your elbows, so elbows push out as hands press in. And release, roll the shoulders back and forth. And give yourself a few little neck rolls side to side. And then let's come back to center. Come to seated. And if you can, sit with your feet on the ground. And we'll just take a few moments of meditation. And drawing your shoulders down and back. Feet firmly planted under your knees. Inhale, lift your shoulders up, pull them back. Exhale, release. And draw your eyes to a close. And take a couple cleansing breaths. Sighing out the mouth, really inhaling deeply through your nose. Allowing your belly and ribs to expand all directions. Exhale, sigh it out. And one more. And then let your breath return to natural. 
And with your eyes closed, allow the forehead to relax and release any wrinkles or tension it might be holding on to. Let your jaw unhinge slightly and tongue rests easy in your mouth. And then I invite you to focus on your third eye center. So the third eye is this space that we tap into and it's really from the pineal gland, the center of our brains. It's as if you're taking a soft gaze out through, um, through your forehead, the space between your eyebrows. But it's a soft gaze, we're not staring intently at it. And the eyes rest easy in their sockets. And then just focusing here gently, begin to notice how you're feeling in your body. Notice the mind beginning to quiet perhaps, and perhaps not. Today's class is all about finding that center of you, that grounding point. And then we're going to bring this into our artwork today. Continuing to breathe, just observing the body. If the mind is racing, it's okay, just allow your breath to be your present focus. Thoughts can come in, but allow them to flow out and become the observer of your thoughts. And imagine as you breathe, your whole body expanding in all directions on the inhales. 360 degrees. And as you exhale, allowing everything to soften and contract. Envisioning with each inhale, the body expanding, the pieces expanding. With each exhale, the pieces coming back together. So it's this pulsation, this ebb and flow. As if every molecule pulls apart on the inhale and then they come back together on the exhale but there's this cohesion regardless if you're expanding or contracting everything is pulled together taking just a few more breaths if you'd like to set an intention for our art practice today, you may do that now. And maybe your intention is simply just to be in the present moment, enjoying the experience and letting go of the outcome. Or perhaps it's calming the mind, grounding the body. Whatever it is, draw that into your mind. And take a deep inhale through your nose. Exhale, side out the mouth. Drawing your chin to chest, let your neck be long. Gently blink your eyes open. And look up, draw in the light, draw in your awareness around you. <sighs> and let's get started on our class today. I don't know about you, but I feel so much better. Let's begin. So if you have some supplies on hand, um, really you just need some colorful paper. Even if you color it yourself, say you have some markers, you can just color some paper um, or construction paper or scraps of whatever you want. It could be from magazines, even um, catalogs, whatever you have laying around. And uh, scissors or I like to use an X-Acto knife. If you're using an X-Acto knife, I urge you to put some cardboard under whatever you're cutting. So get your space set up and um, something for the background of your piece. So it can be a piece of construction paper, it can just be plain white paper, and you'll need some glue. Although, we're gonna experiment today and you may not get to gluing during our rest of our hour together, but that's fine. 
And I've picked a color theme for today. So if you saw my post on the event page, I've gone with kind of these blues. And I have all these old scrapbook papers from many years ago when I was in school and never know what to do with them now. Um, I use them for collages that I used to do. And uh, so it's great. I have all these papers. I have all kinds of colors. But make do with what you have. And we're going to get started. So I'm going to move the camera and bring you on this journey. I'm just going to start by cutting out shapes. I've got multiple papers. I've got this kind of light blue. I've got this um, turquoise. We've got this gray rocks. Sorry, we've got a dog going crazy. And <laughs> I've got some of this blue pattern paper. Literally, you can use one color if you want for the whole thing, although I kind of find it nice to use a multitude of either colors or gradients, or you know, maybe you're gonna go from blue to green. And I'm just gonna start by cutting out some triangles. And I apologize for my dog if you can hear her. And if you have scissors, you can just start cutting with scissors. Doesn't really matter. All right, so this is not gonna be the most exciting thing to watch. And you don't have to do triangles. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, right? It's gonna be so exciting to watch me cut this. <laughs> it's gonna be really methodical. I love the X-Acto knife because it kind of just allows you to like chill out and just start cutting out shapes. And triangles are really simple shapes to cut. And we're just gonna start going for it. And I'm just gonna slide them off to the side. So if you have scissors, just you can just make a little pile and make all different shapes and sizes of triangles. And what I'm gonna do is the one I started, I actually never glued down. So I'm gonna start cutting. And if I don't let my dog out, she's gonna go crazy. So let me do that. And, um, sorry, I think this is going to happen every week. Um, <laughs> this happened last week, too, or two weeks ago. Just to start cutting out all different shapes and sizes. And I'm going to do a bunch in one color, and then I'm going to switch it out and do another. The nice thing about this is literally, like, no stress, right? We're cutting out triangles or squares or trapezoids or whatever it is you feel like. <laughs> cutting and if you have one of those cutting mats I have one but it's so big it takes up my whole space so I didn't bring it up but those of course are great to put behind your paper if you're using an exacto knife and we're just gonna keep cutting and then I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what we're going to do. So those of you tech people out there probably have a lot more information on what defragmenting <laughs> means, right? So if you have experience, I would love to hear in the comments what exactly defragmentation does. I know it like cleans up your computer and allows things to run smoothly and it literally puts pieces back together in a sense. Uh, something I used to do with my PC all the time, like back in the 90s. I don't know if that's still a thing that everyone does. But I have Macs now. Sorry if you're a PC person. But I don't run that on my Mac. All right, we're just going to cut. And it's just really nice when you're cutting. And, you know, be mindful of your fingers. Please don't put your fingers behind the blade. <laughs> it's amazing how often I see people do that. And it scares the crap out of me. <laughs> just kind of go nice and slow. You don't need to have a death grip on your knife or scissors. I like these types of projects because it's going to form as we as we go. So there's not really an agenda of what this is going to be. It's more about experimenting. I'm warning you, it is going to get a little tricky to maneuver these things. So 
another good reason to have an exacto knife because I like to use the tip to like move them around. I you know when I was in college we had all these collage projects and if anyone's ever taken color concept they may have had these projects but oh my gosh thousands of little pieces on some of these I would have so many layers all right I feel like I'm gonna switch colors and I'm gonna grab a different piece of paper and start cutting that. I'm going to just slide these off to the side so I've got my little pile of triangles going. And I'm going to keep them separated by color. So I have this really cool paper from scrapbooking that looks like rocks. So I'm going to use some of this. It's obviously in that gray tone. And sometimes what I'll do is I'm just going to cut off like a chunk. And then I'll cut out of that so I don't have to have this huge piece of paper in my way. And I'm going to keep going with triangles as my theme, but again, you're welcome to do whatever you want. I'm going to thank you guys, those of you who are watching live. Thank you. So we've got Johnny and Ben and Eileen. Eileen! Eileen and I worked together for so many years. Oh my gosh, that's awesome that you're on here, Eileen. I love to reconnect. <laughs> We, uh, we worked together at L Brands for, gosh, I think I was with her about nine years. That sounds about right. And there I've got like a diamond shape, but that's kind of cool. I'm going to leave it. Sometimes as you're cutting, you're just going to see that other shapes emerge. And I'm going to keep keep going. I feel like I gotta fill the time, but when you're doing this at home, it's so nice to just put on some music and just chill out. Or sometimes you just want to be in the quiet. Gosh, if it was a nice day, this would be great to do with the windows open, as long as it doesn't blow everything away. But it's beautiful out today. I don't know if it's window open weather, but it's like 60 degrees. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to go out for a walk after this. It's going to be amazing. The dogs are going to love it. All right, we're just going to keep going. Hey, Jody. Jody's joining us. I love seeing everyone pop up on here. Even if you're just watching and not doing, I, I love it. I don't know about you guys, but lacking connection is really hard <laughs> like people family that i normally would see all the time you never see them or you might call them but it's just you know it's been a hard 2020 everyone can agree on that i think some more than others but i don't know many of us have lost our jobs or you know just feeling like lonely if you live by yourself it's got to be so hard I often wonder like what would I do all day by myself because I can entertain myself pretty long time but every day would be rough like in the evenings especially like I'm good all through the day I have projects to do work things to do obviously building my business doing these projects for this type of activities but then I don't know about you guys, but I, you know, if you are home all day, I would love to hear what you do all day. I know Netflix is probably high on the list for many, <laughs> which I totally get. Totally, totally get. And the weather's getting cold. It was nice out. I was walking every day. All right, I'm going to cut a few more. And then I'm going to switch colors, and you guys can trade out. Whenever you're ready, you can go to the next color. I'm just making some nice little piles of triangles. And we're going to keep going. I 
And you can see like here, I've got these little random four-sided things. That's fine. And maybe I won't use them. It doesn't really matter. Let's see. All right. I feel like you guys are just watching me cut paper endlessly, which is what it is. But if you're cutting with me, then it's not so boring. It's kind of meditative, actually. <laughs> so it's nice and slow. And yes, your hand can sometimes start to hurt, but I don't think we're going to do so many today that that should be the case. Now, as we get to putting these on the background paper, I urge you to not use an 8.5 by 11, especially if you cut small triangles. You're going to be here for like 20 years putting things on the paper. You could use 5 by 7. I think I have like a 5 by 5. I, I went square. And that picture I'm posted, I'm actually going to use those triangles, but I'm going to rearrange everything and just play around with it. And then you might, you know, keep some paper nearby because sometimes you'll need a shape that you don't have and you'll want to, you know, cut something that fits into a space. So, all right, I feel like I'm good on this color. I'm going to cut a few more. What colors next? All right, I'm gonna grab my turquoise papers, it's like my bright summer color. Once again, I'm just gonna cut a little piece off, get the big sheet out of the way. Oh, there's my dog. <laughs> so I have this Yorkie named Wheezy, and all of a sudden she feels like she needs to be interrupting all my art classes. Ready to come back in. All right, I'm going to let her in. Keep cutting. She's in. I feel like every week when we do this, it's going to be the dog in, dog out. <laughs> and I know Eileen has so many dogs. Oh my gosh. I wonder how many dogs. Eileen, if you're listening, how many dogs do you have? <laughs> Type it in the chat. I wish I could see the chat. I feel like if people are making comments, it's not showing up. Okay, nobody's making comments. Everyone's just watching, which is great. Hopefully you're cutting with me. And if you guys enjoy these projects or see them and think, you know, oh, my daughter would love this, my granddaughter would love this, grandson, whatever, like, invite them in, please. These are really for the benefit of you guys. Kind of for me, too, because it's making me do the things I, like, these art projects that I really like to do, which I never make time for. So there is some benefit for me, but, you know, this is meant to be fun for everyone and make art feel inclusive and not scary and make it something fun and enjoyable. This paper's thick. So I'd love to hear from whoever is participating. Like type it in the comments. I'd love to reply. See how everyone's doing. Where people are from, where they're watching from. So nice that we can have these platforms of connection. We tend to get lost sometimes, or we forget that with social media we can actually interact with people and it's not just liking posts and and all that. We can actually in some ways almost have a conversation. All right, I'm going to cut a few more and then I'm going to go to my last color and you can have as many colors as you'd like. And we're going to start arranging these. Ah, well that one's not coming out. All right, so I'm moving these out of the way. As you can see, I've got my little piles over here. And then the last one I'm going to cut from today is this cool snowflake paper I have. Let me just cut out a chunk. Sorry, I'm 
cutting out of the screen because I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna lose all my pieces here if I put this up on the desk. All right. And we'll just cut out the last round of triangles. Or whatever your shape might be. And this is really fun to do like real mosaics if you've ever done one of those. Much different. Take pieces of glass or pottery. I actually like glue them and grout around them and I've only done a real one one time, but it's really a cool, cool project. Takes a lot more physical work than a real mosaic. So you gotta cut down the pieces of pottery and as you could just smash them up and then figure out how they go. And much like our project today, we'll be um, arranging them before we glue them. And then the gluing is where we'll probably run out of time today, so that is, might be a to be continued on your own. And we're just going to cut a few more. And then I think we have the least amount of this color. I'll cut, cut a few extras. And it's fun to arrange these in ways that are like, I don't know, you can just play with color, you can play with design, you can arrange it in the pattern of an actual object, like, I don't know, I was thinking of doing a bird, I didn't draw it out, but you can draw it out on the outside and then erase later. And we're just going to start experimenting. Like the one I did for the Facebook promo, I was like, eh, I don't really love this, but it's it's good to show like a work in progress. And I didn't glue it down, and I was I have, it's already um, jumbled up, so I'm gonna reuse some of those pieces, and we'll start arranging differently. All right, I think that's a good. So I'm gonna set my knife to the side. I'm going to grab my background piece of paper, which again is not very large. So this is, well it's kind of all jumbled up now, but you can see how I had it. And then, let's see, I'm going to move the camera down here and see where, what we can do here with this. <laughs> Technical issues with a small space. I'm going to move those colors out of the way. And then we're going to start arranging. So let me move some of this stuff out. I had these in groups, right? So let's see. I'm going to put my colors kind of together in groups. And then if you want it to look like a certain object or thing, you can begin to sketch out an outline. Certainly not necessary, but it does help in this process. So maybe, I don't know what I want to do. If you just want to start arranging and maybe playing with color, that is totally an option for you. And this is where the X-Acto knife comes in handy because I can kind of stab it or flip it over. And that's so helpful. All right, I'm going to move these out. Let me try to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see all this because I feel like I'm super zoomed in. All right, I'm going to lift up the camera. Oh, Johnny's in Santa Monica. Awesome. I love Santa Monica. Beautiful. Thank you for the comment. <laughs> and let's see. So. I'm going to, let's see, I was thinking about doing a bird, and since I didn't really pre-sketch, I'm going to take a pencil, I'm going to move these off. We'll see, and maybe I'll do it, I'm like, oh, I don't like that, but it's going to be really basic. 
All right, so if you're like, oh, but it's not happening for me, or I want to do something else. Actually, you know what? Hmm, do I want to do a bird? Yeah, I'll keep it really simple here. All right, and I find sketching while filming is really hard. All right, <laughs> so there's his beak. I'm just going to keep it really simple. Almost like a dove. All right, so this is not meant to look super realistic, and I might just have him run off the page. And let's see, how's his wing going to go? And you can always, you know, look up a picture of a bird. I don't like how off center he is. I'm not loving that, but it's fine. It's just experiment. You can always erase if you don't like what you've done, and if this isn't working, I'm just going to ignore it completely. But I'm going to start arranging my pieces. And this is where I like to use my knife. And it helps if you put kind of like your straight edge along where whatever you sketched out. And if you didn't sketch out anything, just start playing with your color positioning, your design. And just start seeing what comes out of it. And you can group your colors, you can mix them up. I am going to kind of group mine together. And even with this beak here, like, this is where, you know, sometimes you don't have the shape you want. And then you can cut out a new piece that's the right shape. Beak's a little small, but I think that'll work. Oh, yeah. And start seeing, you know, what, what do you, what do you ex want to have to experiment with? Like, what design, and honestly, color alone might be more fun than just doing it this way. And you can kind of mess with your shapes. And if your shape's too big, you know, just cut it in half. Like, the beauty of this is this is your project and there's no rules. And it can be whatever you want. All right, and the really hard part of this is once you get this beautiful design arranged, you have to go back in and glue. And you can glue as you go, so there's no rules about, like, I, I just like to work a certain way. And I will say, usually at some point, I will stop and glue before it's too far gone. And I have, I'm totally out of this. If you, anyone scrapbooks and they have this glue pen, this has been like my go-to, but it's like dying. So I do have an Elmer stick. Um, you can use whatever you have on hand. But I'm just gonna keep arranging mine for now because I like to experiment because I might do it and be like, oh, that's not what I wanted. And I can still obviously change it around if I haven't glued anything down. So your project, your experiment, and when it's all glued down and dried, you can take an eraser if you have pencil lines and go back in. Oh man, these pieces are sticking, huh? And at some point, I'm going to start transitioning out of this light color, but I think I'm going to keep going for a little bit. It's just kind of fun to move them around and see where they're at. And if you have like a colored background, that could be really cool with this project. I did not think far enough ahead to be like, oh, that would have been cool to have like a black background or dark blue, especially with my blue theme and grays. I think that would have been a nice addition. And you can see it's starting to take shape. Sorry, guys. It's hard to demo when I can't pick up the pieces. Oh, the, tr <laughs> the drama of this. <laughs> and let's see. So we're going to keep arranging. At some point, I'm going to start. I don't love the shape of my wing there, so I'm going to kind of modify it. But I'm going to start transitioning into other colors. So I think I want the wings to kind of have this turquoise in them, especially on the tops. And then maybe I'll kind of bring this darker color down. So the fun thing about 
colors. I love playing with its placement and to see how it changes the visual of the piece. Here's one of these that I have that's kind of not triangular, but it could be a really cool top of a wing. If anyone has kids that are a little bit older, this is probably a really good project for them. I would say little ones probably not because they're not going to have the patience, but you never know. Some kids surprise me and they have this amazing ability to focus for extended periods of time. Right. And I'm just going to keep going. And if you don't have an exacto knife, you can use a pencil, but it probably will leave marks on your uh, paper. I just find it invaluable to pick up the pieces that I'm using. And let's see. I don't know, let's see, I'm messing with my arrangement here. Sometimes I'm like, no, that's not right. So this is pretty dark. I don't know, I might just put the, the turquoise. I'm gonna use the darker gray at the bottom, almost like a shadow. Maybe I'll kind of intersperse these light ones and kind of just start transitioning out slowly. And then I'll put some of these darker ones just towards the inside. Man, I am struggling to pick these up today. You guys having the same problem? You can see, even though I designed this as an hour-long class, this is, we got 20 minutes, but this is easily something we can do for many hours, even something this small. And you can also do multiple, so maybe you have like a really tiny piece of paper and you're like, oh, let me just play with it. Doing multiples is always a good idea to experiment. Uh, yeah. If anyone went to school and had to do collages, I would love to know what you guys did. I wish I could show you some of my collages. I probably have some down in the basement. I should have dug it out. Many nights up till 4 a.m. gluing little tiny shapes of all sizes. <laughs> Different. I did, I don't know, I remember doing some that were curvy. We had to do a fairy tale or something, and I did the Little Mermaid, but like the original Little Mermaid. So it's kind of dark and morbid in its idea. If anyone's ever read the original Little Mermaid, she doesn't live at the end. <laughs> and the moral of the story is more or less, don't obey your father. So quite a different take than what Disney did. <laughs> Certainly much happier in the real one. But yeah, she kind of goes off to these spirits of the air because she can't get the prince to kiss her. And so I chose that as my scene for, for my collage. And it's and we had to do all this stuff with the color theory with it, so it was a purpose for it for our school, but it was a lot. And I ended up really liking collage. I thought I hated collage. Like I thought I hated it. And even where I'm off center here, like I can always trim this piece of paper down a little bit and I kind of like that his tail is going to go off, so no worries. And I already like what's happening. I don't know about you guys, but I'm digging this. So I'm kind of going to start staggering these. Maybe do a little bit more to the wing. Mm -hmm. Love that piece there, so... Again, this is where you can play, kind of make it look like feathers. This is, and already my kind of ugly, quick drawing is turning into something cool. And I'm digging it. I'm gonna start putting some dark, and I need to fill in here. So I'm trying to figure out what color is gonna fill in. Here's some of my grays. So you can see it becomes like a shadow here. Like this is so Christmassy with the little dove. Uh, that's pretty dark, so let's see. Oh, 
This is where it gets so tricky. All right, I had these scattered, but I guess I'm gonna move them back over. I think I like the little bit more of a transition. And oh my gosh, I've cut almost all my pieces. Got a handful left. Who knew? I like this shape. All right, so I'm gonna start scattering some of these dark pieces down here as well. You can see, obviously, the smaller the pieces, the easier things fit in together. So some of these might be too big and I might take them out. And again, really want to utilize your line as like the straight edge of a piece. So some of these are probably gonna go over here. And the real headache comes when you start to glue, to not like blow everything off. If you have to cough, turn your head. <laughs> Seriously, like I'm laughing, but I can only imagine right now if I sneezed or coughed on this, what would happen? Mm -hmm. If any of you guys actually complete this, oh my god, I would love to see what you do. Love, love, love. I would love feedback on these projects because this is a new business and I've only done a few of these art classes online. But, you know, I know there's other artists doing things online. I follow Amy Miracle, and I love doing her classes. Although, she teaches them Fridays at 1. And it's a little hard to do those when I'm doing this. But, oh, next week, I will be um, Saturday morning. So, I'm switching the time. I think it'll be better for most people. So, Saturdays at 11 a.m. is my plan. I think that I feel like that's a good time. I feel good about it. I feel like the Saturday after, or Friday afternoons, like, like I know my niece was going to do this, and she's still in school, and I ended up having plans, so I had to keep this one on Fridays. But you know, I feel like Saturday mornings, I usually do my yoga, and then I have time before I run on errands and get into my day. And so it might be a really nice time to do your project. Oh, this is overlapping. All right, so these two, I don't really like the arrangement, but instead of messing with them now, I'm gonna leave them there for now. And then when I glue down, I can move them or swap out for something different. If I try to move those, I know it's gonna be a disaster. And I might grab a smaller triangle. So I've got a lot of these dark ones over here on my other page. Ah, all right, sliding this off the table. I'm going to put that one there. And this is probably about the time where I'm like, okay, I can probably start gluing some of these. I still have some holes to fill. And it might rearrange as I go, but I've got kind of my base here. And even if I don't love what's happening, I'm like, okay, I can adjust a few things. It's looking less like a bird. So I'm trying to figure out, thinking, oh, I shouldn't have let the tail go off. It seemed like a really cool idea, but now I'm like, Err. but it doesn't really matter that much. So maybe I just change his wing. And I have these feet here, those might go away. So if I let his wing kind of come up, flourish up. Oh no! Well, there goes those pieces. But if I let his wing flourish and come up, okay, a little bit more of a point here, then I can differentiate the body slightly. Oh, everything's now moving around, <laughs> sticking to each other. Right now I'm just going to use my pencil. Man, this is the hardest part of this project, is lining it up. 
All right, this is where I feel like I, it's time for me to start gluing. And I can either figure this out later. Obviously, it's running off the page. In hindsight, you know, maybe I would have changed it up a little bit. I think the feet, I'm just going to take those off. Because I really feel like I could have had a nice line. Like this, I like all this happening. I wish this was allowing me to, you know, do the point of the tail. All right, I just got a warning from Facebook time check. I'm going to try not to cut everybody off like I did last time. i got to adjust my time limit on Facebook so it doesn't cut me off after an hour. All right, so not perfect by any means, but I think now is a great time to start gluing. So I'm going to slide these extra pieces out of the way, and I'm going to probably fill in a little bit. We've got about oh, 10 minutes, so we'll be wrapping this up, but... To glue, I'm going to try and use this glue pen that I mentioned earlier. So I need to get a new one. This is called Zig Two-Way Glue. So normally it's blue and it goes on and then it's clear when it dries. So it's awesome. And it allows me to um, see where the glue is going. But last time I went to use it, granted this is really old. <laughs> it's, it's all clear at this point. All right. So I'm going to slide this over just a little bit so I can access it a little better and I'm going to start gluing. So I'm going to pick up one and just put a little glue on the back and then flip it over and put it down. Right? As easy as pie. <laughs> this again is where your lovely X-Acto knife comes in handy if you have one. If you don't have one, use your pencil. And then you can hopefully erase. Oh no, look, it just came up. This is also the problem with glue. You could glue the background. I just, it's really messy when I do that. And all the dirt sticks to it, so. Oh look, it's all stuck to my hand. It's on. And like, that part got messed up, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to slide this over. And not worry about it. It's not going to be perfect. All right. We're just going to keep gluing. And it's okay if they kind of move as they go. I think that other one was up there. Maybe I want to fill in a little bit as they go. I don't know. There's two ways to do it. Part of me is like, oh, I should just glue as I go. But then I don't have the time to see what it looks like. And sometimes it gets a little messed up, so I'm gonna like slide things around. There we go. All right, so we've got about eight more minutes. If anyone has any comments or feedback, I would love to hear from you. It's nice to see Nicola and Yvonne are watching. I love seeing all these like people like just coming together. I hope people are creating today. And if you weren't able to create today, maybe you can come back to this and learn the concept and do it this weekend. I would love, love, love if you guys want to post um, what your artwork looks like. And if you go to my site, Creative Souls Art and Yoga. Sorry, my Facebook page. We have a private group on there that you can join, and it's, you know, three simple questions. It's just no biggie. Um, and you can join there and post your artwork, post comments. I always want people to post, and, like, people never want to post. I don't want it to just be, like, a news outlet for my yoga and art classes. I want it to be a group where people are coming together. All right, you can see where I got messed up, so I'm just adjusting it a little bit. Now this one's gonna, I kinda lost its spot, so that one's gonna go here. All right, it's getting a little tricky, so I'm gonna put this one here, and then I might, yeah, move things around a little bit. 
I can always fill this in with another one, which I might just do. Maybe I'll move this one out of the way. I've got this cool shape here. That one looks like it'll go in. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So, I think this just about wraps up our time. What time is it? We got five minutes. I would love to hear thoughts, feedback, if anyone's actually doing this right now, or if not, I'll be doing these, try to do them every Saturday as much as I can. We'll see with Christmas and New Year's, obviously there'll be some schedule changes, and I'll be, but I'll be posting the events. You know, come like my page. These classes are free. I always take donations with Venmo. If you want to Venmo me, at Melinda Dash Van Kirk. But, you know, I would much, this is really for you guys to get involved and I try to give back to, to everybody, especially when that's stuck in their house for the holidays and they're home alone and it just can't be with family and friends. So, you know, this is one way for us to come together as a community and really, I don't know, appreciate each other for. For all that we do and for just being together online separate from each other but <laughs> you know I, I appreciate you guys that are joining today thank you so much for watching and please keep gluing I'm gonna keep gluing after our program ends here in just a moment thank you again and namaste everybody